Every entrepreneur dreams of overcoming all challenges to experience the sweet taste of success and to see their business soar to unrivaled heights. Affin Bank propels your business forward by offering banking without barriers and supporting your business goals. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Profit Max podcast, where we try to bring you tips and insights from various successful business leaders and entrepreneurs, uh, so that we go beyond just what you read from my book, no? By the way, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, my name is Peter Lam. I'm a business strategist, business growth strategist. I help companies, especially SMEs, to grow and become more successful. And I wrote this award-winning book in 2018. So it's available in uh, bookshelves and of course on the internet online. And uh, well, what we do is we try to add value. Yeah? So today we are very honored to have with us a special guest, none other than Dato Chevy Bay. Um, those of you who play polo will know him for sure, but he's also very well known in other circles. And uh, he has founded actually a very unique business called Book Doc. Uh, I guess you can call it a bit of a tech tech business, and uh, well, we'll we'll get him to introduce himself and tell us more. So, welcome to the show, Dato Shabby. Hey, thank you. So maybe you can start by telling me, me. You how you got started and how did you start and found Book Doc and what what is how it's been doing over the last several years. Yeah, how I found a Book Doc was because a friend of mine have near death experience asked me for help. So after that, I, I call and I help, help him. Then there's trigger number one. Trigger number two, I'm in healthcare. So a lot of people keep asking me where's a good doctor to go through, et cetera, et cetera, to a point that I, I feel like I'm a call center. So I, <laughs> another friend, we thought, why not go and start a digital healthcare company that can research online, uh, uh, verified, right? So that's how I started BookDoc. Yeah, so you were telling me about uh, how you got started and uh, you didn't want to become a call center and so... Hey, so when you started, did you partner up with anyone or you just founded it and slowly... My, I founded it myself, me and another guy who started the Groupon. So the Groupon guy and me started it together, then later on we built a team today. We have about 40 over staff, yeah. Okay, the Groupon guy, you're talking about Joe Neo? Yeah, correct. Oh, okay, so he's your partner. Yeah. Okay, he's running fail as well, right? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. All right. So, uh, are you still involved in the family BP health business, Chevy? A, a little, but not 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 the day to day. Okay. So, two independent businesses. Yeah. Correct. Okay. What what made you leave uh, the running of because there's a much more bigger and more established business. So, what made you come out on your own and start this totally from scratch? I think to find a greater purpose, right? Nothing wrong with in the family business, but the family, we have a few siblings, right? So I think uh, me not in there is, is not an issue. Me coming and doing something is a big step forward, but I like challenges and challenges uh, build new skill sets and, and accountability and responsibility, you see. Okay. So you are shooting for a new challenge, basically. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, did you get financial support from the family business? No, nope, I didn't want an single cent. So it's all oh. um, yeah. Okay, so it's quite quite a personal achievement, huh? Yeah. Can you tell us, Shabby, how did you scale up your business from starting almost from zero to where it is today, where you have 40 over staff and probably achieve quite some good scale? So we got about a million users plus minus now also. So we've got about 20 we corporate companies, MNC, Fortune 500 companies as our user. Normally, we sign a three-fire contract with them. We have global partnership with Agoda, Airbnb, Uber, Grab. So to bring the fellow when you're sick to drive, Uber, Grab can pick you up and send you there. Uh, now, even telehealth, you can talk to doctors online. 
and order pharmacy drug delivery delivered to them. So okay. you have grown quite a fabric. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I think BookDog is quite well known now. But what I mean is in the early stages, right, what was it that, that gave you that ability to scale up? No, we just keep trying and we work very hard all of us, right? Nothing, don't grow on trees, don't grow from, money don't grow on tree or fall from the sky, right? So we are all of us working very hard 24-7 at all times to be able to achieve the scale we have today. Okay. Um, was there like a breakthrough point where, you know, you found a perfect partner or you did a strategic alliance or you did something right and then everything else just clicked? Or no, you, I think it's... trying like 20 things and then see what happens. We we started with a lot of partnership and we keep growing and you have the fly, fly view effect where everything keep adding up, then the momentum start building up, right? Then the company keep growing and growing after that. Mm. Okay. So, um, okay, in this time of pandemic, where a lot of businesses are hit, but I guess your sector is probably least on, even not, not maybe you're even benefiting from the pandemic in the sense that healthcare has become a higher level of consciousness with most people. Is that is that true or? Yeah, that's, that's quite true. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you can tell us how you benefited from this. Uh, so benefited, we have more people coming to the app to find doctors more people coming to our webinars to listen to the MOH doctors from Monday to Friday, 12 to 12, 30, talking about sleep apnea, eating disorder, or even COVID-related stuff, right? So you can ask questions for free. So more eyeballs in our games. We have a few hundred thousand new users. And subsequently also we do COVID testing, lab uberization. So we go to people's home and offices to do real-time PCR tests. And subsequently... We were also involved in the vaccine rollout, so we managed PWTC, Chuchi, and IOI for vaccine for the Malaysian. So wow. we have grown quite a fair bit of things, and yeah, we have really benefited uh, from this. Okay, so it's good to see that uh, not all businesses are negatively affected. Your business yeah. is actually thriving as a result. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so in your journey, yeah, Dato. Yeah. From a from a zero startup building it up all the way here, what 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 are maybe two or three pieces of advice or, or insights that you can give to SME businesses who are probably trying to maneuver through this? I, I guess you just need to be very persistent with what you do. You know, every single time you just get uh, this incentivized because people turn you away. But uh, if everything is so easily attainable then things will also get away very quickly. They say easy come, easy go, right? So the harder it becomes and you 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 have the greed and you know you're doing the right thing, just keep going for it. And when the time comes, then you're you're ready, you see. Mm. What's what's the one thing that keeps you with so much determination and drive and grit? I think the, the key part is I want to show that. You know, whatever family background you come from, I'm just like anyone. I start a startup from scratch and I can do it to what it is today. So if I can do it, everyone can do it too. Mm. And the other grid is that I'm doing in a business that when I'm helping humanity, right? Healthcare. So that is another drive that the more people I touch positively, the better. Okay. For the society. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say is your vision for the business? Where, where do you want to take it? I hope the next three, five years will become the the go-to digital healthcare platform where you think healthcare, you think book doc, you see. Okay. And and I guess um, in this day and age of tech, tech technology, right? It's actually borderless, right? Is it borderless? Yes, very borderless. So we've got patient from Indonesia talking to Malaysian doctors, for example, or Malaysian talking to Singapore doctors and vice versa. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you share a bit about your business model? How does it work? I mean, how do you monetize this? So we work with companies and we charge them a, a fee, la, maybe a three to 10 ringgit per member per month subscription. That's number one. Number two, we have a marketplace just like your Lazada, Zalora, where we get a percentage cut, like a five, 10% for everything we sell. So these are the two key revenue streams for Bookdog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's volume driven. Uh. Yeah. Because the fee you are charging sounds like very small. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you have to look for partners who are going to be on your marketplace 
and you have to grow yeah. your membership base. Yeah, right. Okay. So I was saying for people who may not be so familiar with the tech industry or the tech space, what are one or two pitfalls that people should avoid now in, in technology sector? I think there's no pitfall. I just some of them, they, they're just too idealistic. They think that things work or number two, they're looking at market that is not scalable thing. So I think these two are the key things. So there's one thing to start a business or say of starting a business is also not good lah, because you you have no greater calling or greater purpose than just to say, I have a startup or I'm going to start a, a company, right? Mm. Then you wasted your your life, your youthfulness. You could be working in another multinational or GLC, for example, because startup is not for everyone as well, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm glad you pointed that out, no? because um, I hear this a lot. No? Young people, they look at uh, Mark Zuckerberg's story and all that, and they think it's like, wow, I can do this. no? But there's only yeah. one Jack Ma in the whole of China, and there's only one Mark Zuckerberg in the whole of US. So yeah, yeah it's a great asp aspiration to have, but you got to yeah. make sure that you have what it takes. Uh. Yeah, so, right. so what I'm hearing from you, if I'm right, uh, is you got to have lots of resilience, um, able to face no's and rejections and failures one after another and just keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds very easy, but it actually takes a lot of inner resolve. Huh? Yeah. Okay. How, how do you stay on top of your game, uh, Chevy? No, I just stay abreast to all the customer service. Every day, all the customer service email, I also receive a copy to looking at other countries like in the US, Europe, or even China, right? What some of the uh, healthcare or innovative company they are doing, then how we, we could sort of do the same or we could do the same, but localize it, you see, some of the solutions. Hmm. So you seem very, very driven and I'm still trying to identify what is it, no? You were talking about the greater purpose of reaching out to millions of people. Um, is that is that the only thing that's keeping you going? Yeah, I think that and also being able to secure a lot of global partnership, right? It, it's a testimonial. So that drives me more that, hey, even Uber is my partner, even Grab is my partner, Agoda, Airbnb, Trevago, they're all my partners. And it shows, in the, it's a testimonial, right? That your solution is working. That's why they even want to partner with you. Otherwise, they wouldn't bother talking to you, you see. Mm. Um, how much of, okay, you, you have 40 plus staff, how many of those people are in sales and marketing? How many of those are in technical? In technical, about half of them. So the IT staff is about half mm. of them, the rest are. Then maybe about the remaining 25% is admin staff, the 25% is business development. Okay. Um, yeah. Can I ask you whether you're already profitable or have been for a long time? We have been profitable for the past three years. Yeah. Okay. And um, where where are you investing in your business now? No, in the technology thing and also how to penetrate more consumers okay. market as well. Okay. I, I noticed there are a couple of other players coming into the scene, uh, mm -hmm. including including BP Health Group. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same thing. So mm -hmm. is it is it is it a getting a more crowded? Is it getting to be more crowded? No, of course, if you have any business, right, you tend to have competitors, but again, we, we don't focus on competitor, we focus on our customer. We are mm. more customer-centric. We don't build a company fighting off con uh, competitors. We, we build a company to solve consumers' problem, right? Then it's a more sustainable one than just trying to fend off any one of the competitors, right? Sure, sure. So what what do you what would you say gives you that extra edge? You know, apart from being the first mover advantage, um, how else are you better than the others? And so our global partnership, I think we're the only one. There's all this global partnership, and we also endorsed by the Ministry of Health. Mm. In addition to that, and now our our corporate client uh, from the the GLC to the MNCs, so it makes us very unique and different. Okay. And you were saying yeah. you tie them up with a few years contract, right? So that kind of locks yeah. in. Fantastic yeah. model. Okay, very good. So what, what's the next step for BookDoc, uh, Tato? We continue growing, so to continue finding more new corporate companies, working with them, uh, then look at the telehealth space, the internet of things, AI. 
Okay. Are you, yeah. are you thinking of ultimately listing your business or something like that? Maybe down the road, but not, not anytime soon for now. Not anytime soon, okay. Because you're profitable and you're yeah. growing. So there's no necessity for foreign funds, I suppose. Yeah, all right. Okay. Very good. Um, okay, so you're quite a young chap and uh, there are also a lot of young people in business. What advice would you give for young people who are starting out and maybe in the first five years in business? Get mental, mental, mentors, not one but a few, so they can advise them on what the young guys should do and should not do, because they have been through, they have all the experience and wisdom. So now you're just tapping into the wisdom and experience of all these older gentlemen. So it's important to have mentorship. Hmm. Okay. And you yourself live by that? You have a couple of mentors yourself? Yeah, I have. I have quite quite a few, which I always reach out for help. Okay. Yes, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a genius, right? I mean, if I what for? I need to go through the mistake. If someone have gone through, and I and just talk to me, and we can just do it. You see. Yeah, yeah. Saves a lot of time, no? And it shows yeah. a certain humility as well, right? Because if you think you yeah. know everything, and then you find out the hard exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because the world, the world is so complex and getting more and more complex, well, mm -hmm. and we can't know everything all in one person, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're talking about getting mentors, advisors, possibly some business yeah. coaches like me, you know. Uh, okay, and uh, mm. what what would you say is your business or management philosophy, yeah, uh, Dato? Uh, our job is to connect and unite patient and healthcare providers uh, as our core mission. Okay, but your personal philosophy in business. A personal philosophy. I mean, just work, work very hard. The harder I work, the luckier I become. So that's my philosophy. Okay. So sounds like you work very long days. Is that right? Can you share with us a typical day in the life of Dato Shevi Bay? Yeah, exactly. I wake up about 6 ish I go work out. I finish, then I start doing my work about 7. Then throughout the day, to the evening about 10 ish, then I go to bed about 11. So, a lot of work meetings and a lot of uh, what you call strat strategizing plan and strategy as well. Mm. Wow, you're like a human dynamo, man. That's like 15, 16 hours a day. Pretty amazing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Thank so, you. obviously, obviously, you have a tremendous drive, you know, that's why I really take my head off. Um, all that, all that burning desire in you somewhere is propelling you real, real dynamo. I mean, to start work at seven and work all the way to about ten and then go to bed at eleven takes takes a lot of determination, a lot of discipline. Yeah. Mm. Where would you say you got that? Where, where did you say you? Where would you say yeah. you learned that? You no, know, that 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 ability to discipline yourself and be very self-disciplined and motivated. So I went to a boarding school in, in England. It's a paramilitary school for Sandhurst called Wellington College. So Wellington, the uh, is there are Sir Templar, John Templar, Sata RMC Malaysia. So ah. it's a military school, so they teach us discipline, right? I Wake see. up at the, on time to do your own bed, all those things. So that inculcate the disciplinary uh, way of doing things into me uh, and subsequently. I apply it to the business side as well, right? Mm, okay, excellent. Yeah, some people tell me yeah, why the rich people send their kids to boarding school is to learn discipline. Uh, I, guess, I guess your story kind of bears that out. Okay, um, just back to the uh, healthcare sector for a little while. Huh? Um, mm. I mean, health, the health industry is mushrooming and it's so so broad, right? You got specializations and now sub specializations and all mm -hmm. kinds of things. Which which area do you see the most growth? Is it is it mental health because of the pandemic? Is it is it uh, general health? Is it vitamin? Is it boosting immune? I mean, just try and give us an idea on where where do you think is moving? I think of course mental health is one is because it's affecting people during the lockdown. But another one going is all your AI like it's 
robotic surgery, etc. I think wow. that would be an expected thing also. Okay, amazing. You mean actual robots take, doing surgery? Simple ones, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that's something we can expect in the future. Yeah. All right. Um, I know you're very busy and I don't take up too much time. Any final words of advice you'd like to give to our audience? No, I guess just if you have the attitude and you want to start business, go start business, but find the, the necessary mentor. Uh, if not, don't do it for the sake of doing it and wasting your beautifulness. Mm. Really. Okay. So research thoroughly, get the right mentors, learn as much as you can from other people's mistakes and other people's success rather than make your own and be very sure what you want to do yeah. why you're doing it uh. yeah and then once you once you get started yeah. work like crazy okay. and uh, make it happen uh. like you said yeah. right the harder you work the more luck you get yeah okay so thank you very much uh, Dato Shevi wishing you all the best okay okay thanks Peter you take care. Bye-bye.